I think so. Um, certainly in free agency, um, unless uh, unless something happens on on the on the trade front that opens up stuff for free agency. But I I think certainly uh, on for free agency it will um, it will be it will be it for us in terms of what people would brand as a big splash and and uh, we're, we're happy with where we're at. Uh, just quickly too, we know that there was interest in Brody last summer and something almost happened, but. What is it that you've liked about this player now for well over a year? I think the like the things that we've liked about him, Terry, are you know ob- the fact that he's he's played with with an elite partner in Mark Giordano for uh, for a number of years now, and uh, and they've had a lot of success as a pair. And as we have tried to uh, as we tried to find a partner for Morgan and or Jake Muzzin now uh, that can complement them and and uh, boost the results of our team. Uh, TJ in the style and way that he plays uh, and the way that he operates on the ice and his skill set uh, defensively and with the puck um, just always seemed to fit with what we were looking for. And and that's why he's been a target of ours now and, and why we're happy to have him here. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. We'll go to Greg Wyshynski from ESPN. Go ahead, Greg. Thanks a lot. Hey, Kyle, um, is there movement protection on this deal with uh, TJ? And if so, do you think that was maybe what put you guys ahead uh, of other teams seeking to sign him? Uh, there's, uh, there's partial, uh, there's a partial no move. And it's as many of these, these contracts are at this time with the expansion draft coming up. Uh, it, it's a no move that uh, it's the exact same language as the Muslim contract uh, that, that you would have, probably better access to right now than I hear, but um, it, it's part of it is a no move. And then another part is a, is a no trade. So he's got the exact same uh, protection as Jake Muzzin uh, who signed with us in the winter. Thanks, Greg. We'll go to Luke Fox from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Luke. Hi, Kyle. Congratulations on the deal. Uh, just wondering if you could take us back and, and what you could tell us about, your first attempt to get TJ through the Nas and Kadri deal, and if if maybe uh, what made you want to continue to pursue him now? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot has been written and assumed about that, but there was never any deal uh, there with Calgary. Calgary was one of a number of teams that we were we were talking to, and and um, we permitted them to speak to to Nas and his people about potentially going there, but it wasn't if it wasn't as though if he would have accepted going there, that it would have automatically gone there. It was just a part, it was a different part of where the trade talks were at and in order for them to carry on, they want, they knew he was on, uh, that they were on his no trade. And so we, we granted, uh, Brad and their staff permission to speak, uh, with, with him last summer. Um, but it, even if he would have said yes to go there, it wasn't uh, a given that we would have, would have moved him there at that time. We would have done what we felt was best, but certainly TJ, has been on our radar for, for a long, long time. And, um, you know, in, in continuing to watch him this year, we felt he had another good season with Calgary um, and just fits the needs that we feel we have on, on the back end. Uh, the ability to play on the right side where he's, he's thrived throughout his career, um, you know, and able to play along Morgan or Jake, whatever Sheldon feels is best and whatever the best fits are. And then we have Justin Hall and, Travis Dermott that can also um, fill in there as well. So we're excited about the fit for us and, and what he brings to our hockey club. And as a left shot who plays the right side, do sometimes uh, we on the outside make too big of a deal of what, what way a guy curves his stick? Uh, no, I, I don't trust me. There are people on the inside who make a big deal about it as well. So it's, uh, it's not just uh, – it is not just confined to media or fans. We, we talk about it a lot in here as well. And I think the thing with TJ is that he's, he's done it for so long going back to the OHL and it's, it's what he conveys that he prefers. So, um, you know, he, he's able to play on both sides, but has predominantly played the right. And um, there are a lot of guys that can't do it just the way that they receive the puck and where they receive the puck and the ability, the ability to shift it across their body and make plays. It takes an extra uh, second or half a second probably um, and that's it's not for everybody and, and some players uh, struggle to do it but uh, he's shown the capacity to do it the intelligence to, to do it and, and so he's done it for such a long time now that it's not even really in dispute and that's what makes the most sense for us. Thanks a lot. Thanks Luke. We'll go to Steve Simmons from Charleston. Go ahead Steve. Kyle, coming into today, you said you wanted to make the team harder to play against, and you 
talked obviously at times about um, it, the need of a, a right defenseman. Mm -hmm. How pleased are you that in one day of free agency you were able to really address two of your largest needs all at once? Uh, uh, thanks, Steve. I think we're we're content with with uh, the work here today with with Wayne and uh, and with TJ. But I still think that that we have uh, we have a long ways to go and to continue to address the roster and and not just the roster but what we do to continue to improve the way that we play and and what we expect out of our guys so i think it's a good i think we also know that we've got a long ways to go as an organization to to meet the expectations that our talent dictates should be there and uh, so we're you know looking forward to not being so content and continue to try to find ways to improve if we can but um you know we're, we're happy with how it started off with the draft and today and um, now we'll, now we'll continue to get to work on trying to find different ways we can, we can improve this because we know we have to. How significant was the fourth year with TJ? Um, you know, our, our main thing was we, in that Steve is that we, we had done Jake Muzzin's deal and, uh, Jake is, is, uh, is a, is a little bit younger than, or older than TJ, but our, our key with those guys. And we, since we had the precedent of Muzz having four years, we were just focused on keeping it at four and, and not going beyond because we, we felt that was fair based on the, the internal precedent that we had uh, with a similar player. So um, that was, uh, that was where we wanted to, to keep it. And, and it was amendable to, uh, to Anton Thun and, and TJ. And so we were, we were excited to, to get that. Great. Thank you. Well, with three more questions, Jonas, Mar uh, Jonas Siegel, Mark Masters and Kevin McGrath. We'll start with Jonas Siegel. Go ahead, Jonas. Hey Kyle, I'm just wondering how close you ended up coming with uh, Petrangelo. Uh, not very close. <laughs> uh, this has been our this has been our major focus. So um, it's I mean that's that's this is a, where we were locked in on Jonas and and we're set on uh, on going down this path. And so it was one thing that uh, that we worked on from from noon on with with Anton and and uh, and Paul Capizano. At Cortex to to try to get this locked in here uh, today because the, though the market has a lot of players on it, there aren't a lot of defensemen that are capable of playing in the top four uh, that have the exact skill set that we need. So we felt we needed to to act, and, and so we we're excited to do so. And, and what kind of move do you anticipate to to kind of get cap compliant? I guess now sure, that Peter's sure. on board. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that we went through with this was. Uh, was Brandon and I have spent a lot of time over the last month or number of number of months now, whatever it's been, uh, and just in determining the, the, the different strategies and ways that things went. We never wanted ourselves to be boxed in and had to move somebody. So between uh, between the free agents that, that that we still have and and what we can do with them on their contracts, and additionally the players that are wa that are waiver exempt for us. We wanted to always be able to have a way and find a way to uh, to not box ourselves in and have to move somebody. So even with this move, I know on the outside, um, it, it may seem you may look at it and say, "How how are they going to do that?" I can assure you that that uh, Brandon um, has carved out a number of ways that we can um, that we can dance as it as it pertains to being compliant on opening day uh, mm -hmm. without having to necessarily move somebody uh, that people would normally look at and say, "Well, they're going to have to move this player at this salary." So. Um, Brandon's done all the work on that and we've gone through it, it feels like hundreds of times and I feel horrible for the amount of work I've put on his desk, but he seems to thrive on it and do very well. So, um, thank goodness for him and, and all that he's done, but we've got a number of different ways that, um, that we can get this done here to be compliant on opening night. And also while still being in the market here for, uh, some players that, maybe don't have the um, aren't getting the types of offers they want and, and want to come in here and see a, see a great opportunity um, at, uh, at lower dollars. So, so that's, that's what we've tried to accomplish today and, and maintain our flexibility there. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you. Go Mark Masters from TSN. Go ahead, Mark. Kyle, what's your comfort level going into the season with uh, the group of defensemen you have now? And do you foresee one of your, your current players playing on their offside to start next season? Uh, at this at this time, Mark, we certainly I, I think would project to see Travis Dermott playing on his offside. He's done that going back to Erie. He's done it with the Marlies. He's done it with the Maple Leafs. So um, you know he he seems to be very comfortable there, and and we would like to see him grow there and continue to challenge up the depth chart. Um, with the intention being that you know in four years from now, um, after TJ's deal has come and gone successfully, that. That Travis has sort of ascended up our, our depth chart that way, and uh, and those are the types of minutes that 
that he's playing while also challenging them for their minutes over, over the next uh, number of seasons. So I, I would I would envision Travis playing over there. We know Martin Marinson can play over there um, as well. And, and we've got Timothy Lilligren, um, uh, of course, who, who played up for us this year and uh, is a young player that, that we really think has, has a great future with us. So we've got options – there as it pertains to our, our defense in general, if we could add uh, somebody that uh, that uh, maybe possesses a little, little bit uh, more power and presence on the back end at, at, uh, here in the coming days, uh, we'll still like to try to do that. But uh, we'll see how we'll see how that goes. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we'll finish off uh, Kevin McGran from the Toronto Sun. Uh, star, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Steve. I uh, just wanted to ask you sort of directly about Travis and Ilya. You obviously sound very confident that you'll have both of them under contract, but are things going well with them? Like they look like they might be the ones squeezed out here in some way, but you know, no, I, I don't, I don't think they'll be squeezed out, Kevin. I think, um, you know, with, uh, with Travis, um, you know, it, it might, it might have to just be on a shorter term, contract which which uh, Brandon will handle with with Jeff Jackson and uh, the people at Wasserman and then with Ilya I mean he's uh, he's either uh, he's going to be an arbitration case potentially if, if there can't be something worked out there but th- that's a that's simple because it's it's one that can be solved in in arbitration and um, you know the comparables are, are we're pretty confident that they it's not a it's not a wide berth in terms of what the comparables are and what his number would would land at so um, you know, I, we've kind of, as in the question there that, uh, that Jonas had asked, that's part of, you know, what, what we project in terms of where those guys will be as part of our whole projection of how we can, how we can make this happen by opening night. So, um, that's, that's what we're looking at now. 